Today we're taking a look at a tool that does use the DaVinci Resolve neural network. And from my understanding, all of the neural network tools are exclusively for the studio version. If you don't have studio, it might be worth watching this video because if you do make content for multiple platforms, let's say YouTube and Instagram or something that has vertical video, this is something that might be beneficial to speeding up your workflow if you do do this over multiple projects. Um, so without further ado, let's jump into it. How to use the Smart Reframe tool in DaVinci Resolve Studio 17. Before we get started, for those who haven't seen my content before, I do have a website that's fully dedicated to everything DaVinci Resolve. You can go there and take a look at a ton of different tutorials I have, as well as pre-made assets. So the first thing we're gonna do is just have a project set up. I already made one here. And this is just going to be our initial project that we're going to be working on. This project, we're going to do everything until we have a final video. We're gonna go through, we're gonna add our audio, we're going to do any type of adjustments to this video. We're then going to color grade, all of that. And then before we actually go to the render. So we wanna make sure that you have everything done uh, up until this point, because the way in which you have to set this up, unfortunately, I went through the uh, struggle of learning that DaVinci Resolve crashed a lot. If you don't do this correctly, we're going to be making a copy of our timeline and we can't use the current timeline that we built upon and then just use that in, let's say, a nested sequence timeline within a timeline. So initially, I wanted to set this up so that the subject was constantly in different positions on the screen and see how this worked, if it was per shot or if it was going to try to make all of the keyframes for changing up the position of where we currently have everything reframed. So it's just people, multiple people, some people like here, the kid is going from the right side of the screen to the left side of the screen. Um, I just wanted to see how it worked. So my initial idea was I was going to make a timeline and then because if I make a timeline here, I do some color grade, I add some music in, let's say I wanna change the color grade at some point in time. If I just take the timeline and put it into another timeline, I would, you know, you would see everything reflected because it's just referencing a different timeline. So that's what I initially did. I made one timeline and then I made my second timeline, let's switch this up. And I put the second timeline on here, right? And what I quickly tried to do once I did this is I tried to come into reframe and every time I would hit reframe, it would start and it would instantly crash. It didn't matter how every, any setting I changed, it would crash every single time. Maybe that's not a good thing, um, but again, we're still in beta, but it crashed every single time. So then I had to uh, look into how you were, how they recommend to set this up and how they were recommending setting it up was making a duplicate of your timeline and then changing a couple parameters. So I would go into my main timeline, we would open this up and here are our timelines. Go into the main timeline, we're just going to right click and then we're going to go to duplicate. And then once we have it duplicated, let's go like this so we can see it. I do have two copies, so we'll just, this is the duplicate that I just made. Once we have it duplicated, the next thing we're gonna do is right click on it, go into timeline, timeline settings. There's a couple of things we wanna change here. Obviously we wanna change the resolution. Instead of wide, we want tall video. So we're just gonna switch these numbers. So 1080 and then 1920. And then the other thing that we wanna do is come down here and we want to scale full frame. So what that means is, uh, actually let me go back so I can show you what this would actually, let me open this one up. So this is how our video would currently be shown. They're showing the whole clip within um, the resolution, right? So that's not exactly what we would want. So in the settings, after we change the resolution, we're also down here in mixed match resolutions. We're going to set this to scale full frame. So that means that the whole frame has some part of the image, but it's going to be a cropped. So obviously it doesn't squish everything in there and make the video tall. It's going to keep its aspect ratio, but it's just going to crop off some of these sides. So we're gonna click that and then click okay. And now we have everything or everything um, full frame or full screen now. And as you can see, some stuff is kind of chopped off. We don't have the kid in this image or this uh, clip. So the next step that we would do is we would highlight everything and then clip 
or click reframe. I don't know how that would interact with my uh, computer here, but let's uh, go through and do that. So there we are, we're going to do that. And one thing that I noticed is once this gets going, the graphics card is going to shoot up. So it's obviously accelerated by GPU, which is amazing. Um, so that's just going to shoot all the way up. It'll go through everything, obviously, depending on the hardware you have, depending on the size of the resolution and so on. So once that's done, then we can go through and we can uh, kind of view everything and see what has happened. So if I click on this first clip here and we're looking here in the position, what it's doing is just uh, obviously the top and bottom are going to be the top and bottoms of the frame, but it's just going to take that full uh, uh, wide shot and it's going to move it around based on what is in the frame that it believes is the uh, subject and I'll get into if it didn't pick the correct subject how we would fix that one thing that's cool to note here is that what it's doing is it's adding in keyframes so if any point in time if something is a little off you can go in and you can adjust the keyframes so as you can see the keyframes are here and if I open this up to actually see the uh, how the keyframes are laid out. Oops, that's zoom. We'll go into position. We can see that it's making slight adjustments as it goes through the shot. So uh, you can go in and at any point in time change those up or completely clear them. Like you could say, okay, this shot, maybe I just wanted it to be the female and not the male. So I could simply come in having this shot selected, reset this, then I could, you know, bring this over so it's her. And then we'll hit this little drop down, go to Smart Reframe. Once it's uh, enabled, we can come into here and pick our reference and then just pick on wherever the subject matter is that we want to have reframed. Now that we do that, we'll click Reframe. It will then analyze only the clips you have selected because since I only have this one clip selected, it's only going to reframe this one shot. And now if I play this, let's turn that off. If I play this, it's keeping her uh, reframed throughout that whole shot, even though it's moving, as you can see the keyframes that were there to um, change that up. So it's pretty cool. Um, now I'll go into, as you can see, now the, the kid is there, the whole thing, even though it started with him off the screen, uh, when you go and you uh, have the smart reframe uh, begin, it'll look at the whole shot, even if it's cut off within the program monitor. So I just wanted, after I did that, I then started to play around and there was a couple of other shots that I wanted to see for like subject matter and people, I get that, right? And then I also tried animals and it did pretty well, uh, but now I wanted to see how it would do with random elements here. So this shot here is a jet fighter and as you can see, for the most part, it's in, but then different parts, it's cut off, like there it's cut off, here it's cut off. Let's just see how it does without doing anything else. All right, so now if we take a look at this, it's keeping that fighter pretty much centered. And that's another thing to keep in mind here. Depending on what you're actually framing, it's going to try to frame everything center. Typically when you're shooting a film or something like that, you want something to not be completely in the center, but then you have to remember that you typically have more you know, to work with if it's a wide shot compared to a vertical video. And so most in most situations for social media, you're going to want to have whatever the subject is in the middle. So as we've seen there, it kept that pretty much in the middle. Now, there are a couple issues sometimes when it won't keep it in the middle is when obviously it might be uh, for a wide shot. It might be the subject is all the way to the edge and it'll butt the video all the way up to the edge, but we don't wanna ever see black. So it'll go all the way to the edge where it can, and then if the subject goes off, obviously we don't have footage to continue going over that way, but it, it does its best for the most part. And like I said, you at any point in time, you can go in and change the keyframe. Uh, here was another one. I was like, okay, I don't know if it can tell that that's a person. It doesn't have like normal person um, like structure, uh, but, it does follow him all the way across, and obviously it can only go so far to the edge. Um, here was another one. What was this one about? Okay, so this was an interesting one. There really aren't any people in this, right? There might, you could say that that's a guy there, but then it's like, oh, this is moving. The camera's kind of following it, but it didn't follow it. It jumped back to this one. Why it did that? I don't know. So let's go back. Whoa, 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 whoa. Let's go back to that uh, shot 
and let's go and set this up for um, something different. So I'm just going to reset that and ooh, I'm on the wrong one. We're gonna reset that and I'm going to bring it over for this helicopter. Now you don't have to do this, but obviously I wanna be able to pick the correct thing. We're then going to turn this on. Now oh, we gotta switch this, no, wait, where is this thing? Uh, hello? Okay, there it is. So I'm gonna pick this as the focus, right? To follow this and reframe. So now it got that in the middle and now it's just following that helicopter. The other one doesn't matter. I thought that that was really cool, right? Till it gets to the edge and then it can't do anything more. Um, and then this one was pretty cool. It kept it right in the middle the whole way down. Um, as you can see, the keyframes, it's constantly moving. And I, was, I thought that this, because this has a lot of different things that are going on. The shape that I was tracking is continuously moving. Maybe it tracks with color as well, because that, I guess, is the one thing that's similar there. And then here, so as you can see, it's all over the place. Again, it's pretty simple. You just track it. It tries to find the right thing. And then all the way through this whole video, we got them right in the middle of the frame. So overall, I think this is a pretty cool tool, but like I said at the beginning, because this isn't linked to another uh, timeline, I would say go through everything, color grade everything, right before you go to deliver, then you can go in and set this one up, reframe the whole thing, add a different aspect ratio, then you can, uh, if you know how to, you can then go into the deliver page and set both timelines up in the deliver page as jobs and then render out both at the same time. One thing that I kind of don't like about doing it this way is it at any point in time, let's say you are building something for a client and they didn't like a color grade, you would have to go into both timelines and fix that color grade. Obviously, there's a bunch of stuff within the color page that you would be able to reference back and forth, but because they aren't linked in any way and it's just a duplication of a timeline, you won't get the complete copy from one to the other with some type of like linking. So that that is the one downside to this, but outside of that, I think that it's pretty cool. I've, in the past, have uh, made promo videos where I made it for YouTube and then I wanted to put it on Instagram and I couldn't put it on there without having to go through and reframe everything by hand, which kind of sucks. So this is definitely going to speed up the workflow for a lot of people that uh, create content on multiple platforms. Um, but yeah, this is a studio only thing, kind of sucks for uh, people that don't have studio or you know, haven't made the leap into studio. Maybe for some people, this will be the thing that jump, you know, that they'll then go over to studio for. I think overall, it's a pretty cool tool. So it's got the thumbs up in my book. That's pretty much it for this tool. Uh, in the comments, let me know, do you make stuff on multiple platforms? Would this be something that you see as a benefit or do you have a workaround where you, you know, on the top and bottom, maybe you put something, let me know in the comments. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Stay safe, guys. My name's JR. Thanks for watching. Have a good one. I'll see you guys in the next one.